Hey family, what's going on? Klaus here and welcome back to Surviving with Mechanism where last time we set up what is behind me an ore quintupling system aka I can get five ingots per ore that I pump into this machine. Now the problem is that it runs rather slowly through these first three machines uh, but after it hits this fourth machine it just rockets right along and then I set up this automatic system so that if I actually set up my digital miner I can send um, you know the appropriate ores through the quintupling system and then the appropriate ores through the quadrupling system and then finally whatever like uh, 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 diamonds and emeralds and coal and redstone and fluorite and I think that's it can uh, go through this system and double through the enrichment system so I got all this done I did all this stuff off camera the top stuff but I set up all of this on camera so today guys I have two major projects in play number one we're going to be building the fusion reactor okay uh that's going to be a major part of what today's video is about but it's not what we're going to start with uh so if you're interested in only the fusion reactor then uh so fast forward a few minutes okay it's not going to take too long for me to get to, to starting this uh but i do want to get something done first and as you can see i've got my industrial turbine and my fusion reactor rolling right now and this is what we're going to handle first can you see the green? Do you see the green? Yes, that means that the uh, the total capacity on my nuclear waste bins or whatever they're called, waste barrels, uh, is over 20%. Now, the, all this is is an indicator. All it does is say, yo, you're, you're above 20%. Uh, but and it's not causing any problems obviously I'm not damaged I'm standing right next to it and I'm not getting hurt or anything it's just scary and I don't like it so uh, today I'm going to create a system there which oh I've already okay I've got my digital miner and everything with me um, I'm going to create a system in which I can get rid of spent nuclear waste even faster all right so that uh, what that's going to entail though is some fancy footwork now first of all to get the uh the pipes that to pull out of here are gonna have to come off the top and out of the bottom and so they should uh, be able to converge maybe i don't know like right here and then what i'm going to do is we're going to go down into the depths okay down into the depths and let me just make sure that thing can spawn right here okay and um i've got my mini map so basically what i'm gonna do guys i'm going to go down to the diamond level we're going to go down to level 12 and i'm going to allow my digital miner to get some amazing stuff uh, work done for me i've got my portable teleporter in case i i need it and i've got my uh, torch in my hand basically what I, basically what i'm going to do guys is here's the full plan i'm going to bury 1000 <laughs> nuclear waste barrels Ooh, i just heard a witch pretty sure i just heard a witch yeah that's not fun <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Anyway, there's it's probably over there somewhere. I think I heard it on my right hand side. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to be burying 1,000 nuclear waste barrels. Okay. And we're going to be making them today. We're going to be placing them today. Um, but the first thing that has to happen is, and of course, I need to remember, I love my jetpack. It's amazing. Um, the first thing I have to remember is exactly, uh, let me see, all of us can combine. It's going to, yeah. So this is going to be the center hole, but I'm going down two at a time in case I reveal some. Uh, some lava and of course I have discovered a cave I'm just gonna make sure nothing's in here it's gonna light that up real quick uh, last thing you want is for a creeper to spawn above your head or something uh, but yeah so um, a thousand barrels okay and I have done math yes math to uh, to calculate exactly let me see yeah, some math to calculate exactly how large our hole has to be or our, our room down here has to be in order to be able to house enough uh, barrels. Okay, so there was some pretty interesting math that went into this actually, in case you guys are curious. Um, I may uh, share my uh, my document with you online or through Google Docs if you check the link in the description. But basically what it was is I'm going to have a, an entire perimeter around this room with barrels and of course I'm gonna have one on top and one on bottom with the piping going down the middle and then oh wow this is an actual cave I think oh nope never mind <laughs> uh yeah so I'm gonna have uh the the barrels going around the perimeter dude this is what is oh okay around the perimeter and then rows of them going down the middle so that I can run 
and access everything. It's not like it's going to be a solid sea of uh, of barrels, okay? So I know that's really hard to, to fully understand. That's why if you watch the video, you will see exactly what I mean by that. Man, uh, I forgot that I was on top of a mountain, so I'm having to go really, really far down. And there's so many caves down here because I've ran my digital miner, pulled out all of the ores, and didn't bother to fill them up with, you know, fill material. So I've got loads of caves below me, as you can see on the mini map. I mean, there's basically like 3 million caves below me. And the odds of there being something having spawned in one of these is very, very high. Uh, so I'm being very careful right now. Uh, but yeah, so the, uh, the, the room that I'm going to have to make is a 31 by 31. And I'm thinking I'm going to make it pretty tall, like maybe like 8 or so tall. Uh, that's my plan anyway. We'll see how it actually goes down. But I've definitely lost my perspective here, so I'm going to have to figure out <laughs> which... Uh, which line is actually the very middle. And then I'm going to demonstrate to you guys something that um, I actually just learned. I actually just learned, like, I think, was it yesterday that I was experimenting with the digital miner? And I finally figured out how the heck it works, all right? Um, there's, there was one or two mysteries about it that I just didn't fully understand, but now uh, I'm there. So anyway, all right, here we go. We're on 12. So let me just fly right back up here real quick and figure out which line will be the middle. Again, very grateful for my jetpack for helping me do this. Okay, so it's this line here. So I'm going to place the digital miner to where the center is right here. So I've got to be able to stand right here. I've got to uh, waller out a 3x3 three three square, and that's going to be where our digital miner actually sits. Just like so. Okay, and I can get rid of this f7 business and then now let's place down the digital miner and again he's gonna be right there okay so that one was the center line and i just want to demonstrate to you guys real quick the nuance of this digital miner okay but first i've got to be able to access both the ports there we go and of course there's a probably a need for a few torches around here okay so first things first, I am, uh, if I hit F3, I am currently targeting number or uh, uh, level 11. So that means that the minimum needs to be 12. Okay, so if I go into config, minimum min needs to be 12. And I've decided I want this to be eight tall. So let's go ahead and just do maximum being 20. Okay, now the radius, this is the thing I didn't fully understand. If you set the radius to one, all right, then it will begin, first of all, I gotta get rid of all these tags. I'm going to literally get rid of everything, which means we gotta turn on inverse, and uh, let's say um, I want you to mine out uh, portable teleporters. It doesn't really matter, as long as it's something that it won't see. If inverse mode is on, it'll take out everything except for, ooh, you know what? If I did quantum and tingleporters, then it won't take apart its own power and conduits. Yeah, there we go. All right, so there we go. Uh, if I hit start, then I want you to notice what it's doing right now. So remember, if I hit reconfig, I have a radius of one, but it started to knock out a three by three square. That's because it's a radius of one from the center line of the center point. This is a three by three block. In fact, you know what? Let me get up here so I can show you what I mean. Uh, yeah, so this is a three by three block, and this is the center point. This is basically point zero. And if you put a radius of one, it's going to go out one in all directions from the center point. But that means that if I need a room that's 31 by 31, let's do a little bit of math, shall we? Okay, 31 by 31, the middle one is a zero. So actually, I'm going to subtract one from that. So that means I have a 30. Okay, that's the size of the room, 30 by 30. But then I have to divide that by two because radius is, is from the middle point to the outside. So that means that the radius that I need to chop out is a 15. That makes sense. Also, I think that I should add, let me see if I can grab my torches. I just don't want this guy to destroy my torches. Um, config, new filter, item stack, torch. There we go. All right, guys. So this thing is ready. The only thing I haven't done is connect it to uh, power and give it a place to send its rocks. So let's go energy, energy, and output for energy. There you go. So you should be good now. Oh. Hello. Oh, sorry. Energy output's now turned on. There we go. Now we have power. So now if I put down this uh, entangle porter, 
You can place it straight down, hit, um, I'm gonna say items this time, because I've already pulled out all the ores, hit set, and then we're going to input items. Very good, okay. So, uh, I'm gonna turn off silk touch, I don't need it on. Auto eject is on. Uh, auto pull would be if I wanted to fill it with something, but I definitely just want this thing to mine out a room for me. And again, I'm just gonna make sure I've got it right, so 15 times 15, or sorry, 15 times two is 30, plus one because in the middle, that's 31, that's the size of the room I need. Uh, minimum is 12, maximum is 20, that is an 8. That's a 9 tall, actually. Let's make the maximum 19. I just want it to be 8 tall. There we go. Alright, and inverse mode is on for quantum entangler porters and torches, so we should be good to go. Now, it's gonna pull a grand total of 7,000 blocks out of the world, so that's gonna take 30-45 minutes. And so, this is why I wanted to start the video off with that, because typically our videos are 30-45 minutes long, sometimes an hour. Um, and so now what that's going to do is allow me and give me the time that I need to uh, Go build our fusion reactor All right, so now that we have done that guys, let's begin the fusion reactor I'll have this timestamp roughly in the in the description if I can remember to do it if not remind me in the comments And I'll try to do it um, But 11 12 minutes though is whenever you start doing the fusion reactor So first things first we need the parts for it. So let me just hop over. I'm gonna uh Dump all this extra building material and stuff first. I don't need any of it. There we go. All right. So now, for a fusion reactor, you have to have loads of fusion reactor frames. In fact, I'm going to need to make 52 of them. Uh, and so that means that I need a grand total of 52 polonium pellets. Also, 52 atomic alloys and 13 steel casings. You divide 52 by 4. So that's the first step. We're also going to need a fusion reactor controller. That's what you interact with uh, the machine with. Fusion reactor ports is how you put in fuel and pull out power. And then also you have your reactor glass, which lets you look through it. And then you move on to the next big step, which is the laser matrix. And that's what you use to power up and ignite the fusion reactor. So we're actually going to be technically building two things today. Uh, and also, honestly, the laser and everything needs to be first, but the the, uh, uh, the laser focus matrix actually goes into the reactor. This is what, what receives the power burst. The laser amplifier and the laser are what are required to to actually produce and pump out the, uh, the beam. So first thing I really should do is make this uh, laser amplifier. So uh, I'm going to grab everything that I need to make all this stuff, including two of these energy cubes. I think I needed one diamond. I'm gonna grab a bunch of steel. And by the way, I've got loads of steel for today's episode. I've got I've been I've been uh, trying to prepare here. Laser, all right. And I forgot to get these three. And also, I need an extra steel casing, which I don't have. So let me grab some glass and some uh, osmium. So I'm gonna make an extra steel casing. Okay, there we go. I need some redstone and iron. I think I just grabbed coal on accident. That's fine. All right, so uh, let's make the energy cube. There we are. Let's make the laser amplifier, and then let's actually make the laser, which means I'm gonna need a, another steel casing, two more energy tablets, and another diamond, and three more of these blue, uh, blue circles. I just call it that because it's easier to remember. All right, so we have the two parts that we need. We also need a lever. Fortunately, I have one already made from a previous build, so we're good to go there. And this is going to be what we use to charge up <laughs> and ignite our fusion reactor. I wanna get this started because it does take quite some time. All right, so first things first, I need this thing to be facing here. Now, I've already pre-planned this, okay? It needs to be, if you're gonna build this thing on top of the surface, it needs to be three blocks high and lined up in the middle, okay? Uh, and I've already got it all set up to where now all I gotta do is slap the lever on top and I'm able to redstone and power it down. If you don't have this block and this lever on top of it, then if you start pumping power into it, uh, it's just gonna fire it off. And I'll demonstrate that real quick so that you guys can actually see. The laser also needs to be placed down and it's not in line with anything so I do need to get some building blocks. I forgot, that's why I had that cobblestone in my inventory. Uh, I can use any material though. Let's see. Can I use? Uh, I'm just going to use some quartz pillars. And I do want to give it a little bit of space. So let's do. Let's do this. Let's go one, two, uh, three. 
and I believe you have to be facing the opposite direction for the laser to face the right direction. There we go. All right, and we're going to have this little line here just to give us you know, a little bit of a perspective on what's going on. I also didn't want this to be totally visible from, from way over there, so that's why I've got it kind of backed up a little bit. Uh, but I'm a little disappointed in the way it lined up. I wanted it to where I could just run a cable right into it. Um, so I'm, you know what, I might just move it forward. Here, let me do something like this. Okay, I like the chiseled quartz for this job, so I'm going to slap it down. And I'm going to move it. Alright, and also you want your red dot, notice none of the other sides have red dots. You want that red dot to face where the fusion reactor will be. Okay, and then now what this will do is this allows me to pick up this laser. Place down my temporary block. And there we are. Now I have this wonderful easy access. This is my outer, my output uh, entangler porter here. So it inputs on one side and outputs to all the other ones that are connected to it. So I can easily either slap down an entangler porter or put a put a, um, a power cable to it. So let's actually do that. Do I have any ultimate power cables? I think I just have an advanced. Not the best, but not the worst either. Okay, so uh, energy, uh, it's inputting from the back. It's going to output to the left and auto eject. So now, uh, well, it, it should be receiving power. Interesting. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Okay, um, we need you to output to the left. There we go. All right, and as you can see, this laser is quite dangerous. Uh, I accidentally destroyed some stuff. Oh, no. Um, I think I destroyed my torch, too. Yeah, these lasers are dangerous, as you can see. Really unfortunate. Uh, but this is why you need a block on top with a switch. And so now, as long as I tell it to be indicated by redstone, now I can turn it on or turn it off. So now it's off, and now it should be charging power. So, uh, I've got to fix my poor pillar. It got melted, bro. And also, probably should put a torch here. There we go. All right, so uh, this whole thing is set up now, and the amount of power that you need in here for it to actually, like, be able to ignite the fusion reactor is about a gigajoule, one-fifth of the grand total that it can hold. Um, I could probably output more power if I connected an, a direct uh, entangler port to the back of this, or I could put together more lasers. So as I'm building, this is going to be accumulating power, and as I'm building, our room is being uh, mined out by the digital miners. We have two things now that are running automatically. This is exactly the system or the setup that I wanted. Now it's, it's time to begin making this fusion reactor. So let's go into here. Um, I'm going to, uh, well, I don't need this quartz pillar anymore. Let me go ahead and put it away. That's not what I wanted. But it away, <laughs> there we go. And now it's time to begin making all the things. So the first thing I'm gonna need is 52 of these fusion reactor frames. Now, with the fusion reactor, it's one of those few mechanism multi-blocks where you can't like change its size or anything. It, you have to make it the size that it that it wants that that it comes in. There's only one size that it comes in. It's not like the uh, the induction matrix or the fusion reactor or the turbine or even the the boiler, which we haven't made, where you can kind of like size it up or down if you want to. You can't do that with this one. So that means that, you know, you can uh, you can use either reaction frames or you can use reactor glass. Obviously, reactor glass is way cheaper. So you want to use as many reactor glass and as few fusion reactor frames as possible because the fusion reactor frames require polonium. Now, I've got a new bin here with polonium. I've got, you know, four or five stacks of it in there now. So I'm going to grab a couple of uh, stacks of that. I'm also going to grab a couple of stacks of these atomic alloys. And what else do I need for this? Steel casings. I've got all those in my inventory. So I'm going to make 52 of these um, fusion reactor frames. And I should have just enough material to get that done. There we go. All right. So 52 fusion reactor frames. The next thing I'm going to make is the fusion reactor controller, which means I need a basic chemical tank. I'm going to need a single glass frame, and I'm going to need two of these purple squares. And I did make more off camera. They are very expensive. So there's a fusion reactor controller. Again, that's the part that you interact with. I'm going to make four total ports, which means I need two more of the purple squares. Ultimate circuits. And 
I probably only need three of these because you're pumping in two different power, a uh, few different, uh, two different fuel sources, and then pumping out power. Um, all right, so reactor glass. I'm going to need enriched iron. I'm going to need lead and glass. Now I do have all the enriched iron that I need in here, plus four. So let me take away four of them. There we are. And we need glass and we need lead. So this should be it. Actually, I've got some. Oh, I thought I had reactor glass. I've only got structural glass. Okay, fine. So I'm going to make um, 32 of these, which I should have the perfect amount in there. There we are. All right. And then the laser focus matrix. The only thing I need is a block of redstone. I happen to have some redstone. Let's go ahead and make the block. And then laser focus matrix. And remember, for some reason, it gives you two. You only need one. We'll never use the other one ever. Uh, but that is actually what's the laser that we shot off that destroyed my column. That is going to hit this block. So it's very important that 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 is placed in the right place and that is it the only thing the only other thing i have to do is make the whole rom we'll make that after we get our fuel figured out so uh i guess i should put these back i don't need these anymore plenty of polonium see that's what's up that's that is what you need whenever you're trying to to be prepared all right guys so now let's actually build the structure and i see there is a a mob pretty close by down there like I said, I made the mistake of uh, pulling all the, the ores and stuff out when I shouldn't have. It was just not smart. All right, so um, I, for some reason, don't have the actual blueprints for this thing pulled up. But I think I can remember how to build it. If I run into an issue, I will definitely, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out together. But first things first, I have a 9x9 uh, a nine nine block. Okay, I'm sorry, 5x5. Five 5x5 five. Five five block. The middle block is in line with this laser, okay? And so the very bottom is going to be a diamond, okay? And I'm gonna make it to where the entire diamond, and as you can see here, uh, the uh, the if you're looking at a five by five square, you only have a block in the middle on all four sides, and then you have a block connecting them. And on the bottom, you can just use simple reactor glass, and at least that's how uh, that's how I understand it. And the second layer is going to be reactor glass on top of all four corners. And then reactor frames on either side of all of those, not in the middle, on either side. Okay. And so what you're doing here is you're making another uh, five by five square. But in, in this case, all of them have the corners cut out. If that makes sense. See that? And then um, after that, yeah, this is looking right. After that, I'm going to be including a few ports because, well, okay, first things first. You see that laser? We want to put that right there. See how you can see through the circle and see that red dot? That's what you want right there. I'm going to place reactor glass on either side, and I'm going to place reactor glass on all of these sides except for um, probably both of these, actually. I'm going to take this one out and this one out. And this is where I'm going to input the uh, the fuel from over there, because obviously lithium is involved. And then also uh, we need to pump out the power. You know what? We'll pump out the power from here. I think the ports can be on any level, but just to be safe, I like to put the ports here in the middle line. Okay, because it's a five by five by five block. So you have right now you have three uh, three layers, and I'm not quite done with this layer yet. Uh, but you have three layers, and then the, uh, the top two are just a mirror image of the bottom two. So we're going to place down now, fill in the corners. This is now a full solid 5x5. Five five. Whereas all three of the inside blocks on each one are either glass or ports or the uh, the laser matrix. And then the corners are, uh, are frames. So next, now we just begin doing the exact opposite uh, or the exact same that we did from last time. We place the glass in the middle and then we fill in on the sides with frame. Just like so. All right. And now we place the frame on top of all of these centers. And then we want to actually fill in the, the middle line, but we also have to fill in the top. So I'm going to place all these glass on either side, just like so. Fill in the corners with frame, and then put your reaction controller on the top. Now, this thing is kind of acting like I didn't quite build it right. 
uh, but it looks it looks right to me. So um, I'm gonna have to refer to my blueprints and make sure. I, again, I'm pretty sure this is right. Pretty confident this is right. Uh, except for it didn't work for some reason. So maybe you know, maybe we did do something wrong. All right, fine. Well, I'm gonna refer to my blueprints and make sure I didn't make any little small problems. Okay, I've had this problem where in my testing, reactor glass doesn't seem to uh, to work well with me, I, I, at least with the fusion reactor. So I'm going to replace pretty much all of the uh, the glass with reactor frames. It's a lot more expensive, but to be honest, it's worth it. Uh, so let me make, um, I think I need 32 divided by 4, so it's going to be 8, eight uh, steel casings. I think I've got, yeah, I've got plenty. And I'm just going to make enough to where I can cover it all if I have to. So 32, probably overkill. I don't even know. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to replace all the glass with frame and see if that fixes it. I also added a few more torches just to make sure that nothing, you know, decided to spawn on me. So let me take this out. I'm going to replace the floor. And it may just be the floor. I mean, who knows? I'm going to just going to, I'm going to put the floor back together properly. Uh, but again, okay, so I, I was under the impression this would work because I've seen it work before in other, other series and guys and stuff. But, ah, oh, there we go. All right, so that's it. So the only thing I had, I had a feeling because every other multi-block from mechanism has to have a solid foundation, a solid bottom. Um, that's the only thing I needed to change. So follow the guide. Um, just fill in the, the, the base solid with the uh, reactor frames. I've got lots of extra ones now, but now it is actually formed, which is amazing. So, uh, first things first, I, I kind of want to do a little bit of inventory management. We're at 155 megajoules, so I'm only 15% of the way there as far as power is concerned. Uh, but yeah, let me do, let me do a little bit of inventory management right quick. I don't need another port for now, at least more reactor glass, another laser focus matrix, and then I'm going to put away... Well, let me hold on to the enriched iron, but I'm going to put away the material for now. Okay, so now that that's done, um, we now begin the process of putting the fuel together, okay? So to actually get this thing going, we have to have some DT fuel, all right? DT fuel is a combination in a, a chemical infuser of deuterium and tritium. Now, Deuterium, a little easier to get, okay? Not that difficult. Tritium is the harder one. Fortunately, I've got like everything put together already. Uh, to get tritium, all you have to do is have lithium run through a solar neutron activator. Now, I, as I mentioned a minute ago, already have plenty of lithium. In fact, look at this. I got an ultimate fluid tank full of liquid lithium. It does need to be condensed or whatever uh, and turned into regular lithium, but that's it. That's all we got to do. And then for deuterium all you have to do is run heavy water which is just regular water run through an electric pump with a uh, a filter upgrade and it gives you deuterium and oxygen if you run it through an electrolytic separator this is called heavy water so let's go ahead and work on the deuterium first because i suspected it will actually be the easier of the two to figure out actually actually not not really because i've got this already set up here this is already here Okay, well, let's grab, I'm actually going to do the uh, the deuterium first, actually. I'm sorry, the tritium, the one that's harder. So, uh, to do that, um, I've already got everything figured out. All I need is another solar neutron activator. Now, I've got everything in my inventory or in my storage system except for HDPE sheets, which is super easy because if I go over to where I've got my um, ethylene system, I have plenty of HDPE sitting right here. And I'm just going to take those out of my inventory. I should probably keep them handy somewhere. And to make an HDPE sheet, all you have to do, that's not it. All you have to do is make a circle. And there's definitely a zombie or something underneath me. Fantastic, right? So there's that. And then I need the bronze. I know I've got uh, three bronze. And then it's also, what else, what else is it? Two circles, two squares, both blue. One, two, one, two. And then another steel casing, which I've, uh, I don't have any more of. So let's grab enough of that. I should probably just make a stack of steel casings, but for now, I'm not going to bother. So steel casing and solar neutron activator. Very good. I'm also going to get another decondensator, okay? Or condense. 
because it this thing just doesn't work quite as well as you would hope. So <laughs> I'm gonna grab some uh, material to make this work. I need a basic chemical tank. I need a fluid tank, which requires some iron. That's that that was osmium. Uh, a couple of them. And then I also need, okay, I've got the glass. I don't need the basic, or I don't have the basic control circuits, but now I do. And then last thing is an energy tablet. I am running out of energy tablets. My goodness. There we go. All right. Rotary condensator. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, and make some upgrades. I think the rotary condensator can receive speed and energy upgrades, which means I need, let's just take some of them, and I've already got the osmium, so I'm good there. Now, if I run over to my crusher, if I crush, let's just crush 16 osmium. So I think I'm going to need two sets of all these upgrades. And then same thing over here. Uh, I'm going to do this here. Eject is off. There we are. And this thing is still working, but it's near. Oh, I did osmium twice. My bad. My bad. Oh, well, there's nothing wrong with having extra dust, right? You know what? I'm just going to do double. I'm going to double it up. And then also the uh, the filter for later is going to require a tin dust. You know what? We might as well do this as we might as well do this. Just make all these upgrades. There we go. All right. So filter upgrade. I think it only requires one. I'm also going to need uh, 16 of these energy upgrades, although I, I don't really need energy upgrades i've got i'm especially after this uh, uh thing is done dude it's gonna be crazy i'm gonna have so much so much power it's gonna be just stupid but all right there we go we did our upgrades that's good get that over with and now what okay so i've got my solar neutron activator and my rotary condensator. let's go ahead and make the electric pump while we're at it which means i'm gonna need another steel casing i should just you know what let's just make a stack of these one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and four. And I'm going to shift click. Come on, where is steel casing? There we go. Okay, there's our stack of steel casing. I like having extra uh, steel casing sitting around in my uh, in my uh, personal chest there. Okay, now let's make the pump. All I need is the bucket. And then I can make the pump. All right, and that should be everything I need. Should. I may be wrong. <laughs> I try to plan ahead, but sometimes things just don't go quite according to plan. All right, so um, the rotary condensator. I, I would kind of would like to have two of them. Also, this is one level lower, so I'm going to set up everything to where it's one level higher just to be smart, I guess. I don't know. Because eventually I'm going to want to level all that out. So let me grab my dirt. I know I've got some sitting around somewhere. Yeah, I've got some grass. Cool. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to be pumping the lithium around. Or I could just move a port. I can just add a port. That wouldn't work. That wouldn't hurt. Uh, let's just add a port. Yeah, that'd be smart. I think I've got them, actually. Probably have an extra port in here. Dynamic valve. No, that's not what I have. I could you you know what I could use is a quantum entangler porter. Why would I do that though if I'm so close? Yeah, I could just use a port. Let's go make a port. I'm just gonna make this system nice and nice and simple, you know. So if I type in evap, evap valve, whatever. So I need four of these thermal electro electro whatever blocks. I think I've got six. Yeah. So I just need I need uh, four of those, and I need a red square. And bam, make myself another valve. That's awesome. And then slap this thing down. Actually, I'm going to get up there, slap this baby down. I think I can put a valve right there. I can. Nice. Okay. And then um, it's going to come out as a liquid. So mechanical pipe. And then... Uh, like fluid there we go oh I got no power okay I'm gonna have to bring power over somehow I know that I've got power running all the way to like right here so I just need to drag it around let me just let me find it yeah there it is right there perfect um 
Okay, to get this to work properly, I mean, I could just run it on top of this uh, cable here. Why not? And because I'm going to be covering all this up later anyway, that works. All right, so power. Yeah, why not? Let's just run it right on top. That way it's easy to keep track of. Very good. And actually, it'd be better if it came in from the side, and you'll see why here in a second. Yeah, so let's pump this up and pump this in, and there we go. We have power. Perfect, and it should be working now. Trying not to use up all my grass blocks, but I am trying to make this look pretty decent. All right, so if I toggle that, it's going to be deconcentrating uh, liquid lithium into regular lithium, and this condensator is definitely one of those that needs, uh, well, both upgrades, but definitely the speed upgrade. So let's go ahead and slap those in there. And there we are. Okay, so now that we're making tons of that, let's grab the pressurized tubes, put it down, put it over, and then I've got the solar neutron activator, which you have to feed in whatever it is that you're going to feed in from the bottom. So that's why I left the bottom nice and open. And now it should accept gases. I think this thing has to be told to eject gases out the bottom. There we go. All right, so there we go. We are making tritium. <laughs> That's so good, man. That's awesome. So we've already gotten tritium. That is one of the two materials that we're going to need to fire up this fusion reactor. And by the way, if I go check out how this thing's doing, uh, we're about a quarter of the way there. Nice. We're not doing too bad on time either. So next thing I want to focus on is going to be the heavy water. Um, although, okay, hold on. I changed up my ports here. Let's, let's adjust these real quick here. Good thing this thing isn't running right now, otherwise I would have just gotten absolutely 100% melted. Alright, there's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so right here, right here, I want my ports to be on either side, and I want this face to be completely... Come on, buddy. If I remember right, there's a weird trick. Bro. Okay, so you can't have ports on either side? Now it's not working. Look at that. See, it's it's not not letting me interact with it. Come on, bro. Don't do this to me. I'm just going to place everything back down. Come on. All right, fine. Fine. You know what? It was working the way I had it. I shouldn't have messed with it. Let's just put these stupid ports or valves or whatever they're called back in the middle the way they were. Where's the glass? Why do I only have one glass now? What happened to the glass? Oh, there it is. Okay, there's your port. There's your glass and there's your glass. And now it doesn't want to interact with me the way it, it was before. No. No. See, I told you guys I've had issues with this in the past. Like, dang it. Sometimes it wants to work and sometimes it doesn't. Maybe it's this torch's fault because this torch is ne like sitting on it. Oh man, that's really annoying. I do not understand what I did wrong. Maybe this has to be the last block or something. Ugh, why? See, it, it's weird. It's glitchy. It's dumb. I don't like it. Okay, I got it to go. I don't know what I did differently. Um, I, I did move the, uh, the ports. This entire side is solid, and so is this entire side, but I, I just kept reconfigging it until it finally decided to work. I... I, I cannot figure out the rhyme or reason for how this thing works. Uh, 
At least we have the really cool open graphic on the side that we're going to be seeing it from the most, which is cool. I'm not going to take it apart again. <laughs> I'm going to leave it alone just the way it is. Okay, that's the plan. I'm just going to leave it alone. All right. So now that that's done, that was really irritating. Uh, I totally forgot what I was doing. It was it was a few minutes of, of messing around with that before it finally decided to cooperate with me. But OK, so I am done with Tritium. So the next step is to make a uh, a place for hard water. So at the, if the tritiums come in on, on this port here, and if I'm just going to run the wires straight up, then I should probably do the hard water right about here. And I'll move it. Uh, I'll adjust it eventually, okay? Now, electric pump. Obviously, we're going to have to bring the power to it, which means let's turn it to face this direction. Actually, wait. It faces the opposite direction that you place it. There we go. All right, and then uh, we're gonna have to have the power over here. I'm just gonna run the cable along the top because I am, uh, again, I'm gonna do some terraforming in a future video or uh, off camera or something. So no need to go too crazy. And there we go, just use up every single one of my power cables, which is not good because I'm gonna need, well, Actually, it's not the end of the world. All right, so now let me throw in my upgrades and such. One, two, three. Okay, first things first, filter upgrade. And you know what? I probably should have... Here. Probably should have allowed it to empty itself out. So let me grab a couple of mechanical pipes. It'll, it'll empty out the, uh, the actual water. And then it'll begin to make heavy water. Yeah. Okay. And did I make the electrolytic separator? I don't think I did. I think I totally forgot about the electrolytic separator. Well, let's go make that. <laughs> uh, and as soon as we do that, then guys, we are good to go. And of course, we need uh, two osmium dust. I'm going to need an iron dust. And two gold dusts. Okay. Okay. Electrolytic separator, electrolytic core, throw this all together. Super simple. You guys have seen that a million times. So uh, I believe that the deuterium were, is going to come out of the left-hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and slap that down just like so. And then if we use the mechanical pipes, bam, bam. There we go. All right. So we're making deuterium and oxygen. Now, obviously, we're going to dump excess oxygen, but we are currently making the deuterium. And again, I got the... Uh, I'm going to need some uh, upgrades for this electrolytic separator. Let's go ahead and just do that right now while I'm thinking about it and while it's producing the material that we need. So I've got everything that I Oh, I've got everything I need. Okay, I just need to make, like actually make the upgrades. Let's make eight of these and then eight of these. And I don't think the electrolytic separator gets the gas upgrade or anything like that. It doesn't receive gas. So that's why I suspect it doesn't. There we go. All right, guys. So now we have a uh, maxed out system for making both of the materials that we need to pump into that machine there. So now uh, I'm going to grab. I've got to have some better pressurized tubes than that. I don't have any. I've got advanced. I want some ultimate uh, energy or um, uh ultimate tubes here so let's do this um i guess i'll just make them i'm gonna need i'm gonna need uh two stacks of steel some glass and then a stack well not a stack but like quite a few of i believe it takes eight let's make a stack of these Yes, okay, so yeah, it's going to take eight of each of the uh, different alloys to upgrade these. I always forget, man, it's because I don't do it enough. I don't do it very often. And there we go, ultimate pressurized tubes. Where am I going? I got turned around there for a second. Also, you know what I should do? I should make some ultimate uh, gas tanks too, or chemical tanks. How do I, how do, I do that again? chemical yeah so super easy 
Okay, so I'm gonna need eight of each of these. Do I have in my in my inventory? No. Six, seven, eight. I have a stack of those already, and I have a stack of those already, so I should be good to just make them. One, two. Uh. Oh, I can't shift click because of the the basic tank. Okay, I got confused there for a second. I get everything I need to make these, and what this will do is act as a buffer, so I can start filling these things up. Um, you know, before they go into the reactor. So I'm going to place both of these, and I realize this is a bit of a tight space here, but it'll work out in the end. Believe me. Actually, I kind of want to just run the tanks. Maybe I can have the tanks like right here. No, I want it. I want it to look. Sort of correct. Let's put these both just down like this. I'm going to turn this one. It's not facing the right direction. There we go. All right. And then ultimate pressurized tubes. Of course, I'm going to run them down into the ground. Um, yeah, let's just go down two. There we are. Pressurized tubes. Okay, so the deuterium will come out on this end. And I'm going to go up and over. Getting this whole thing set up. So worth it, but it's it can be a little bit irritating. But again, we're waiting on the power to accumulate in the, uh, the laser. So it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone here. All right, uh, you, sir, need to be accepting on the front. Okay, deuterium is now accumulating. That's awesome. So let me throw in the building blocks here just to make this look a little bit better. There we go. All right, and then I also want to pipe in the tritium, and it's going to be coming in and, you know, Pump it in right next to it. So here, let's do it the exact same way we did the other one. Nice. Okay. Pressurized tubes. And yeah, that'll work. And this will look a lot cleaner once I fill this place up with dirt. So don't worry about that. All right, so the tritium is, uh, it should be kicking out and going into this tank now. Or it's going to accept all the front first. Tritium, nice. All right, guys, so it is now producing... Tritium, both of the uh, uh, fuels are making. And so the last thing we have to do is make our hull ROM, and then we are ready to blast off once this thing is, is ready. And of course, we're not even halfway done with that. So yeah, that's not good. Uh, but this is all set up, so that's awesome. Also, one more thing. Oh, I almost forgot. This is a very important thing, is we need DT fuel. And to get DT fuel, I have to have a chemical infuser and mix deuterium and tritium. So let's go make a chemical infuser and then uh, the whole ROM. And that should be it. Chemical infuser. Yeah. So infuse. Infuse. Chemical infuser. Nice. And this should be relatively easy. Just need to make a couple of these. And I don't have the two green squares and I don't have my still casings on me anymore. I'll grab that. My inventory is a little messy now, but uh, it'll all it'll all come to in just a moment. Also, I forgot the whole ROM, but that's all right. It's a weird it's a weird thing to make. Uh <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of it to be honest with you. And you know what? Let's just slap it down right there. There we go. So tritium is funneling in on one side, deuterium on the other, and DT fuel is filling up right there that is just beautiful all right again i know it's ugly it will be pretty eventually okay just i'll do it off camera because i didn't do any of the uh any of the work beforehand 
All right, so to make a whole ROM, which is basically the starter kit. All right, it's the thing. Oh, I've already, I already have it over there. It, it's the starter kit. It, it begins the whole process. Okay, I'm gonna need four gold dust and a single piece of coal. All right, so good thing I've got, uh, good thing I've got that, and I also probably have coal in here. I've always got an extra, you know, a little bit of backup coal. Here's my infusing factory. Let's go ahead and throw the coal in there. Throw the dust in there. And of course, it uh, cannot be set on sort. There we go. Four to one whole ROM. So now, um, whenever I take this whole ROM over to the chemical infuser, which is making our DT fuel, I will just pop it down in there and bam, it goes from not ready to ready for reaction. So uh, we're going to slap this down into here. Of course, it's not going to do anything until we flip, flip that switch right over there. And last step, we need to connect the two ports to the fuel types. There we are. And that should be it. Uh, it, it may not work just yet. Eject has to be on. It has to be output off the top on both sides. And so now if I come up here, I haven't actually explained anything inside the fusion reactor yet, but if you go to heat this kind of shows you how everything is heating up you don't really have to pay attention to this to be honest uh fuel reactor this is the most important thing injection rate is two the highest is 98 so if it's a two that means it's one millibucket per tick of deuterium and one millibucket of uh per tick of tritium so it's a two one plus one and then you can edit the rate the higher up you go the more of that stuff you're going to be burning so you have to make sure we actually have enough process to actually make it work and then the fusion reactor stats. So we're going to do an air-cooled fusion reactor. You can do a water cool, but it's not really necessary. Um, and it shows you just your minimum and maximum temperatures and things. If you go, if you try to type in zero, it won't, it will let you, but it will shut down the reactor. And then if you do that, it's you'll you'll have to charge that thing up again and flip the switch again. So you don't want to do that. So you always want to keep this thing running. It takes some time for it to slow down and it takes some time for it to speed up. Or like uh to, to power down and then power up, basically. So because our tritium is based on solar power, I'm going to go take a sleep. <laughs> and then let's go check on the digital miner because now this is all running automatically. Like the, uh, the lithium here, it's probably right now filling up. Yeah, it's filling up this cast tank, which is awesome. It's going to be on idle, so it will actually just fill up. This thing is also going to be filling up. Um, we may end up wanting to put another pump, but I'll do all that beta testing maybe in a future episode or something. I just want to get this thing running. So we're going to go check on the digital miner. This thing is running right. Uh, it's about halfway there. So let's go jump down this hole and see how the digital miner is doing.